Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Game of Thrones finale Q&A. Just careful for spoilers from Season 6 if you haven't caught up yet. A lot of questions about Jon Snow's parentage, how he's going to prove it, and just in general what the hell's going on with the last two seasons. If there's going to be 13 episodes, if there's going to be a movie after that. So I tried to include all that stuff. So here we go. First question, Dr. Jim asks, so how can Jon prove it? I assume you're talking about his Targaryen blood. There's a couple ways, but the only real legit way would be to have a record of it in the Citadel. It's one thing for Jon to learn who his parents are, but it's a whole other thing to prove it to the rest of the realm. Maesters being like the closest thing you have to lawyers, the Citadel's records aren't absolutely complete, but they almost have a record of everything that's happened. One of their tasks is to document history. So for instance, Daenerys' birth at Dragonstone was recorded by the Maesters. So like even if Bran came back and told everyone in the realm that Jon was part Targaryen, he showed them the vision, they still might not believe it. So even if one of the dragons cozies up to him, that still doesn't necessarily prove to the realm that he's a Targaryen. So there needs to be a record, and if there was a record of it, it would probably be somewhere buried in the Citadel. The problem with that is there's been no evidence in the books and no evidence on the TV show to prove that there is a record of his birth and who his parents are, or that there was a wedding in fact. So it's possible that Leon and Rhaegar were in love and they got married on the side as was the custom with Targaryens a long time ago to take multiple wives. But that's another thing too that will require a legal document to prove. Next question, Cameron asks, who do you think is next on Arya's kill list? Well, I'd say Cersei in The Hound and she might leave The Hound for last because it seems like she cares about him. The showrunners made a really big deal about what a cold-blooded murderer Arya has turned into. She baked a bunch of frays into a pie. So she's stone cold. But Cersei's in the Red Keep, so she's pretty safe for the moment, and she hasn't bumped into the Hound yet. But I do feel like, given the choice, she would leave the Hound for last, because she actually cares about him, whereas she wants to see Cersei's head on a pike. Next question, Abby asks, I don't understand how the dead cannot pass the wall theory. So you're, you're asking about, you know, like, there, there were previous seasons where dead bodies got reanimated inside the Night's Watch, they had to kill them, that's how they learned about the Whites. So the clarification that the director, like the people behind the episode gave, is that dead bodies can pass through the wall. Once they're past the wall, then they can be reanimated. But if under normal circumstances, like the Night King isn't reanimating someone himself, like at Heart Home, where he just immediately raised all those bodies, during that initial period, there's probably still time while the body is dead, but hasn't been reanimated, while it can pass through the wall. So the other teaser that Dan and Dave gave about future seasons and, and the Night King getting past the wall was that bit about his army not being able to pass through the wall, but the wildling climbers being able to get over it. So we might see some epic climbing montage. It, it sounds like for now, based on the explanation the show has given us, the only way for the White Walkers to get past the wall is either for them to bring it down completely or to travel over it. Next question, Creative asks, where's Ghost? Where's John's direwolf? Yeah, so many people were like, where's Ghost? They basically said that because of the, the, the giant, the effects for it were so difficult to do, they had to choose between doing it and doing Ghost in the last two episodes. I know it sucks and it seems like they have unlimited money, but it, it actually does take a lot of work to do the effects for Ghost. And they just said it was too crazy to try and do Ghost and the giant at the same time. Next question, Alicia asks, anybody know when season seven is gonna air? Well, unless they tell us different, I would assume about the same time, although this season six was a little bit late. So imagine closer to the beginning of April. And just to clarify, so they said there's 13 hours of television left, which is basically 13 episodes across two seasons, making season seven about seven episodes and the last season six episodes. But they also said 75 hours total, 73, we'll call it for now, like that's me paraphrasing what they said meaning that if we get a six episode season eight, there's still two hours left over. So what can you think of that lasts for two hours? Well, they could do a two hour movie after season eight to wrap anything up or do anything that they don't feel like they have time or money to do in that final season. Next question, Anna asks, maybe Samwell will discover how to make Valyrian steel with all that obsidian and dragonstone. Yeah, I think that's the idea. I mean, it, it seems like there'd be too much there for them to take advantage of. And even though in the books they say that the secret of Valyrian steel is lost, the TV show could change that. Samuel could just find some records buried somewhere. Right now, the Citadel is kind of like the TV show's magic box that it could pull anything it wants to out of. Like, oh, look, here's a record of Jon Snow's birth. Oh, look, here's the recipe for smelting Valyrian steel. So just expect any number of things to come out of that storyline. But I'm not expecting a ton of Samwell in Season 7. I think he'll be way more important in Season 8 when they're ready to do like a big White Walker War for the Dawn battle.
Next question, Shane asks, do you think that Tyrion's going to say anything about Dorne killing his niece, like the Davos Melisandre moment? No, I, I think that Dorne would be the one to jump on him, the Sand Snakes. They, they would probably go a little bit nuts if they found out he was a Lannister. They're definitely going to have some fun with that when they get to Dorne, but there's been no evidence that Tyrion knows that Marcella is dead. So hopefully Tyrion will be able to charm his way out of that situation. I think that Daenerys is going to have to step in and help and, and just like order them to not kill him on pain of death. Like, I will feed you to my dragons if you eat my hand. Next question, William asks, why didn't he have any Targaryen features like silver hair? So there were a lot of people that were asking this. It's just that the Stark features, like the really dark hair, the, you know, the facial features were dominant over the Targaryen features. A really good example from Star Trek is half human, half Klingons. Like, even if you have a little bit of Klingon in your DNA, the forehead ridges will stick out just because Klingon genes are so much more dominant over human genes. So it's the same thing with Stark features over Targaryen features. And if you think about it, if John had been born with white hair, it would have been a dead giveaway. Like they're trying to hide the fact that he's a Targaryen to protect him. Next question, Cherry asks. So you actually have a bunch of questions. I'm just going to answer this first one because I think I've answered some of the others. Who is left to fight on Cersei's side? So the biggest character we have on the show right now that actually has some force behind him is Euron. Remember, he was looking to make an alliance through marriage, so I think that he would offer that to Cersei just because he's an asshole, even though she probably doesn't want to get married ever again. If you remember the story of how Davos helped Stannis out during Robert's Rebellion, I feel like we're headed for a similar situation, where the Tyrells cut the food and grain shipments off from King's Landing, trying to starve them out. Remember, a lot of the kingdom's food comes from the Tyrells, so it's really easy for them to just flip that switch off and try to starve King's Landing out. So Stannis got trapped in Storm's End during Robert's Rebellion. They were trying to starve him out, but Davos smuggled onions in to feed Stannis' army. Even though it was only onions, it helped them survive to the end of the war. That is why he's called the Onion Knight. So Euron could become Cersei's version of Davos. Next question, Mike asks, What do you think that Jaime's reaction to seeing Tyrion and Danny's army will be? Do you think that Tyrion will actually convince him to surrender King's Landing, or do you think that Jaime will have to kill Cersei in order to give it up? I expect that we'll see some mirrors to Robert's Rebellion and what happened at the end of that. So we might get a Queen Slayer moment, but I think that Cersei's going to make it to the final season. I think if Jaime were to see Tyrion and all the dragons, he would actually probably be kind of happy for him and terrified at the same time. I mean, anybody would be terrified because you have a bunch of dragons that want to eat you for lunch. But he doesn't hate his brother in the way that Cersei does. He actually cares about Tyrion. So at the end of Robert's Rebellion, after Jaime killed the Mad King, he actually tried to help his father in Robert's forces get into the city to try and minimize loss of life. So if they're looking to redeem TV show Jaime, they could have him betray Cersei in that way. Next question, Aaron asks, could you do a Tourney at Heron Hall in-depth video, please? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I'll totally do videos for a lot of the flashbacks I think we'll do. Tourney at Heron Hall is a big deal just because so much was going on there. The really quick version is, is that the Tourney of Heron Hall was meant to be this big celebration, but in secret, people believe that Rhaegar organized it so that all the lords of the realm would be there and he could explain his plan to depose the Mad King. While they were there, there was also the incident with the Knight of the Laughing Tree, and then obviously the story that Littlefinger told to Sansa about the Crown of Blue Roses. So you have a lot of socially scandalous things happening between Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark. You also have a lot of political things going on too. And I know a lot of people would love to see a young Barristan Selmy. Remember, Barristan Selmy almost won that tournament. Rhaegar defeated him in the final round. Thank you everyone for so many questions though. These are always a ton of fun to do. I'm going to keep doing them for at least a couple more weeks. So feel free to leave any questions you guys have about the season or whatever the bonus videos end up being each week. Congratulations to this week's giveaway winner too. Ben Ayers, you win a $20 Amazon gift card. Be sure to private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact details. That's just on the about page. So my next bonus video will post on Sunday. I haven't completely decided what it's going to be, but if there's something special you guys want me to do, just let me know in the comments. Like I said, most of my bonus videos during the summer for Game of Thrones will probably post on Sundays. So while you guys wait for my next video to post, you can click here to learn all about why Jon Snow might be the true king of Westeros. And you can click here for my episode 10 finale video. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.